Okay, um, so remember the two financial statements that we have learned so far, right? Income statement and also a statement of financial position, right? Uh, and from the two statements, we get to know, okay, there are different ways when a business they're trying to assess uh, their you know, financial performances, okay, or their financial positions. So these are the two statements that they can look at and uh, see where they can improve, uh, you know, the, the, the areas of concern. So this is what we are trying to uh, investigate, okay, so far. Okay? So now I'm, I'm just going to make a very quick recap and um, um, asking people, all right, something essential. Uh, so let me go for, um, all right, Adrian. Okay, Adrian, uh, I hope you can uh, listen to me. So for income statement, all right, can you just give me, uh, you know, the first part of the items that we are looking for? So, you know, when, when you are reading an income statement, so what is very important for the first part? Can you just give me some terms? Um, the gross profit or loss. Uh, okay, okay, that, that's nice, uh, Adrian. Yeah, the first part, of course, is going to be looking at, uh, you know, like the gross uh, profit, right? Yeah, uh, well, just give me a second. Okay, yeah, let me just write here. Gross profit. Yeah, I know, it's, it's very difficult using the mouse for writing, but uh, I'm still going to try it. Okay, alright. Um, and I'm just going to ask uh, another person. Aaron, um, can you tell me something? Okay, how do we get the gross profit? Aaron, you there? Hello? Hello? Aaron, Aaron? Oh, okay, all right. Uh, or Warren, you, you, I mean, you're not Aaron, but uh, still, okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so basically, you know, revenue minus, right? Revenue, okay. So here, oh, okay, revenue, okay, lagging, yeah, I see. Okay, uh, minus cost of goods sold, all right? So here we are looking at the business activity. So, you know, the revenue from selling your goods, Right? Yeah. Sales revenue. Okay. Right. Yeah. And that's how we can get um, gross profit. And um, I just want to see uh, if, um, you know, Alex, Alex Chen. All right. Alex Chen. Can you tell me the second part of uh, the income statement? What we are looking at so we can come up with the idea of net profit. Alex, can you hear me? Yes, I guess I'm still alive. Haha. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, let's see. Um, yeah, hmm. I just want to know. All right. Uh, what oh, yeah, right, right. You yeah. also know minus the electric bills and media. Can you right? tell me uh, the terms in general? Like what we are looking at uh, in order to find out the net profit? Net profit. Ah, that's, that, that's not hard. You need to find your uh, net revenue minus your net cost. Uh, okay. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. Right? Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I, I do like, yeah, I do like the terms that you use. Right. So basically, after you found, uh, you know, uh, how well you have done uh, in your business activity, then you also have to consider uh, two things. Maybe there are some other revenues that you earn um, within the business, like other revenue. OK, you know, like interests. OK, uh, your rental income, et cetera, et cetera. But you cannot forget there are also some operation expenses, like, you know, like the rent, water bill. Uh, y y you know what I mean, okay? All right, and wages for your workers. So operation uh, expenses, or sometimes we call it overhead, right? So all together, then you will get the idea of um, a net profit. Yes. You know why we have to do the recap uh, right here? Because very soon you have to use everything that you have learned so far uh, to learn the next chapter. So you know it's better for us to do the recap first. And then we will go to the next part. Otherwise, it will be very chaotic. Okay. All right. And this is how you can get, okay, like a more, um, you know, objective amount uh, of your business performance. Because, you know, after you've considered all these, then you're able to know basically your business performance for that year. So this is, this is how much profit you're earning for that year. Okay. But that's not the end of the story. So Alex, another Alex, Alex Tam. 
can you give me the rest of the items that I need in order the final um, you know like uh, the, 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 the last uh, item that we are looking at I think we need um, interest Okay. as well as um yeah i think interest that's it and then you, you'll be left with to... retained profit oh okay. are you referring to uh like dividends or something yeah yeah dividends oh, sorry okay dividend. all right yes because you know at the end of the day after you've earned a net profit you you sometimes want to reward uh some of your uh, uh shareholders so you will give them dividends so if you give them dividends all right so that is basically another uh, expense shall we say okay yeah so after that then you will have your final number and which is your retained profit so if you have your retained profit then which means you are able to use that retained profit for other business use or business investment right you can use that retained profit to buy another machine you can use that retained profit to make uh, another uh, like marketing campaign etc etc so this is basically what we are looking at uh, when we are trying to uh, uh, construct uh, an income statement okay all right so now we're just gonna go to the next item very quickly all right um i just want uh arabella can you tell me what is inside the statement of financial possession just give me the three essential items that we always look at assets liabilities and owners and quantity right yeah, thank you very much okay so you know when we are looking at the financial position we always look at the three things all right the assets yeah assets here all right i'm pretty sure you guys do remember that because we have done some uh, calculations and stuff uh from the past uh two weeks or so oh caitlin is here okay hello hello yes um so you know assets is equal well not 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 like this okay no 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 all right all right assets minus liability all right yeah is equal to owner's equity yeah i'm sorry about the terrible uh, um, handwriting because you know using a mouse all right don't expect too much okay all right so um i just want some very uh, brief uh, definition uh, for the free items here uh bernice can you tell me what assets what what are the you know how how, how do you uh, define assets come on just very quickly just use your own interpretation to let uh hello yes yes you can just type your answers out yeah don't worry if you feel like typing it Yes, so assets, what do you think? How do you define it? Oh, it's okay, all right? Yeah, if you cannot turn on the mic, you can type, okay? You can just type, type the answer out. Ah, okay, okay, that's good, that's good, right? Yeah, remember there are two things in your assets, right? Current assets and also non-current assets. Okay, they are all the resources, uh, you know, from a um, from a company. Okay, all the resources owned by the company. Okay, owned by the company. All right. Uh, but you know, Brandon, can you also uh, you know give me some ideas, like uh, what's in uh, liabilities? Brandon, Brandon, yeah, don't tell me you're sleeping. Oh hi. Yeah, Brandon. Tell me something about liabilities. Come on. What, you don't know? Come on. I mean, I'm pretty sure you know. All right, um, hey. There should be two items within liabilities, and you just have to tell me the two items. Well, I mean, Debts. Uh, can, can you have? Can, can you give me something more specific? Yeah, you know, there are specific terminologies for that. All right. You know, remember when we get to this part, things will become super rigid. Yes. There you go. And give me one more. Okay. All right. But you know, Brandon, let me just let me just ask you one more thing. How would you define um, non-current liabilities? Yeah, non-current liabilities. How do you define it?
Okay. All right. Well, let me just take a look of uh, the answer. Debts that are not due within a year. Okay. All right. So you know, you, yeah, you can tell. So basically, current liabilities they are the debts that you have to pay within a year. All right. So you know, so you can you can see so many different definitions uh, within different items. So make sure you know what they mean. All right. So you know you are able to calculate uh, the answers correctly. So with all the items together, then you are able to find out the owner's equity. So owner's equity, once again, that's the resources owned by the owner. Okay, because at the end of the day, you as an owner, you want to know how much you are actually own in that company. Okay, so you're gonna put like share capital. You're gonna put uh, uh you know, retain profit. All right, uh, in your owner's equity to see how much you can really get from the business and that's owner's equity okay all right yeah so there you go um so with that being said so you know when you're looking at a statement of financial position you can see how much assets uh a company has you can also see how much debts uh, a company has and you can also see as an owner how much you can really get from the business itself all right so it's, it's a very comprehensive uh, statement and um, if, if we know all the items like where you know should be put at where then we can uh find out so many more insights okay so um but guys we will talk about the third um statement later all right later now because we have to use the two statements here to create something that will become more meaningful okay all right so we're gonna start our uh, discussion all right based on the foundation of income statement and statement of financial position okay all right so um yeah so now uh, i'm just gonna tell you what we're gonna do uh so guys if it is okay all right so take a look at this and see if you uh, you know can give me some uh, ideas all right if you take a look on the left yeah take a look on the left right here which company do you think is more profitable do you think a is more profitable or do you think b is more profitable yeah, I just want some uh, ideas. Can can you guys just spam the chat? All right, so I can see, you know, which one is more profitable. Okay, people, they are talking about B, 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 but no one is talking about A. Okay, all right, B. All right, so ma I guess majority of the people, you would say B is more um, profitable, okay? But what about I give you some more uh, information, all right? So let's just say for um, company A, all right, they're earning a net profit of one thousand uh, dollars. But what if I give you the sales as well? Well, I mean, uh, basically uh, like revenue. Revenue is equal to uh, I don't know. Let's say a one thousand and one hundred. All right, and for company B, well, let let's just say uh, their sales are. Um, um, ten million dollars. All right, ten million dollars. One million. Oops. Three more zeros. Okay. All right. So, if you have the extra info as well, what do you think? Do you have any insight? If you know, once you have got the second uh, piece of info. So now when you look at the net profit is uh, you know for, for company A let's try to focus on you know company A. The net profit is uh $1000, okay? And the sales is uh you know like um like 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 a thousand and uh, at 100. Yeah. But but candy, why why would you say why would you say that? Why would you say A now is more profitable because you know before I gave you uh you know the second piece of information everybody was saying all right, B was basically more profitable, but now can you explain it to me? Ah, okay. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, Haley. Yeah, and and Kenny, these are some very good answers because you're earning much larger portion of the revenue. That is so true, right? Look at that. When you are selling, all right, you know, for a revenue of uh, one thousand one hundred, but you are earning a net profit of one thousand. You can imagine how much cost that that you have incurred for that period, and how much you are actually earning. All right, yeah, based on the sales that you make. So you know, with that being said, all right. Oh, uh, 
uh, now we know that cost. Oh, okay, that's very nice. Yeah, Warren, that's very nice too. Okay, so now we, we kind of understand, all right? The, the only difference here, the 100, yeah, they, they are cost by like, um, like different costs. And apparently we have a very low cost. And, you know, it, it's a very unrealistic uh, 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 number here. But um, you, you, can, you can really tell if you are being given some more information then there is actually another way to look at uh, all these numbers. When you just look at uh, the yellow uh, memos, okay, they don't give you a lot of meanings. But if you see another piece of info, like uh, the one uh, in pink, then you are able to come up with some more meaningful insights. And this is what we are trying to do in this chapter. All right, We don't just look at the absolute values. We try to make analysis so that the numbers would become more meaningful. Okay, so there will be calculations. There will be, uh, you know, uh, like ratio analysis when we are doing this, uh, and and that will give you some insights, more insights. Okay, how a company has performed. All right, I hope that uh, makes sense to you. Okay, so this is basically what we are trying to do, and um, and if you look at the right, okay, look at the right right here. All right, uh, we see current assets. Okay, we just talk about it. And then we see current liabilities. Um, I, I just want you guys to give me some ideas. When you see the two together, can you give me one term, all right, that is in your head? When you see CA and CL, what is the term in your head? Yeah, we are looking for something. Okay, liquid assets. Oh, Owen, that's, that's very nice. Uh, current assets. Um, well, we already have current assets here, but you know, I just want you to put the two together, and 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 then uh, and then you are able to come up with another terminology. All right, liquid assets. I like it, but you know, there are two more alternative terminologies for that. Yeah, Haley, working capital. Just guys, give me one more alternative terminology for that besides liquid assets, working capital. There's one more thing. All right, yeah. Uh, the, not all exactly because you know if you go back to the equation that's that's right here on the other side yeah 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 Michelle I mean um, right it's something current asset no 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 capital employed no 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 you 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 will you will put owners uh, uh, equity and uh, non non current liabilities together then you will get owners uh, I mean, you will get a capital employee because you want to look at um, uh, the money invested for a long-term perspective. Uh, oh, net current asset. Um, yes, there you go. All right, so there you go. All right, that's very good. Yeah. Um, so guys, all right. So here you have so many terms. You see that, and therefore you should always go back to that. Uh, so you know, here I'm just going to type this out: a working capital. Right when we're trying to compare uh, current assets and current liabilities, uh, also we can, uh, uh, you know, let's say uh, net uh, current assets. Uh, yeah, well, usually we would use the two, but you know, talk about liquid assets. Normally, people they would understand too. Okay, but uh, technically, we would use uh, these two terms. Uh, you know, when we are comparing current assets and uh, current liabilities. Now, obviously, we are trying to look at how easy. Is it for a firm to repay the short-term debts? Okay, all right, because you know we know the nature of the two, right? Current assets, uh, some assets you can turn it into cash easily within a year, okay? And the current liabilities, uh, you know, we just talk about it. So some debts that you must repay within a year. So you know, if you are, uh, if you have the, the liability. To pay off some debts within a year, of course, you need some liquid assets to repay that. All right, okay, and therefore, when you put the two together, you can see the ability for a firm to repay the very short term debts. Okay, all right, but when you look at the two numbers here, are you able to tell how easy you know, it is for the firm to repay the short term debts just by looking at you know, $40,000 and $10,000? Do you think uh, it's easy for that firm? To pay off the short-term debts, what do you think? Any any anybody would like to uh, give me some ideas? So forty thousand versus uh, ten thousand. What do you think? Any anybody would like to um, share? Yeah. So you just by looking at the two numbers, are you?
you able to have a rough idea? It can be difficult, all right, but you can still find a rough idea. You can still find a rough idea. Any anyone would like to, um, you know, like uh, share your thoughts with us? Yeah, not not really. Okay. Well, but you, you know, think about it this way. All right, when you have current liabilities of ten thousand dollars, and then you have current assets of forty thousand dollars so apparently you know the current assets they are well enough to cover all your current uh, liabilities okay so if you think about it this way uh, I guess for this company they are still in a very secure position because at least they know they have enough current assets to cover the current liabilities right now does it make sense to you okay but how do we make things more meaningful so this is what we are going to learn all right this is what we are going to learn all right so now I would just, you know, like you to, uh, uh, you know, just just uh, go to page two. And uh, I mean, yeah, if you just go to page two uh, in the booklet, uh, you can see their uh, words. Uh, but, you know, this is what I would like you to think about. Um, so take a look at this. When we are making like racial analysis, of course, we are able to find more insights. But um, usually we would like to compare ratios uh, with different objects. And, um, and when you're looking at uh, the pictures here, all right, for the first one right here, this guy, what are we trying to compare? So uh, I'm just going to ask people, all right, um, uh, Karina, can you just tell us, like, uh, what are we trying to compare if we're, if we're making, like, racial analysis, you know, uh, uh, based on uh, uh, the one on the top? Okay, uh, uh, well, well let, let me put it this way. What are we trying to compare uh, for this one, for the, for, you know, the one on the top? What are we trying to compare? So, you know, uh, maybe yeah, eventually uh, Apple, they're going to come up with some ratios, uh, right? Yeah, and then Samsung, they're going to uh, compare, uh, you know, they're going to have some ratios. So what, what are we trying to compare? Like, uh, you know, the category of uh, comparison. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, right, yeah, yeah, right. I mean, of course you do want to compare, okay? Uh, you know, the revenue uh, compare uh, between the two companies here. But do you, do you find any, uh, like, common features when we are trying to make such comparison? So what are, yeah, so, you know, this is, this, this is my question. Like, in this case, how would we uh, compare the ratio? So if you are Apple and you are trying to compare uh, yourself to uh, something else all right right here what 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 is the end result you are trying to look at okay all right Warren yeah that's that that makes so much so much sense right so you know so this is basically just company versus company okay all right yeah um well let me just put it this way uh here is this company versus company okay all right so you are able to tell uh you're able to compare within the same industry all right how well are we really doing compared to other competitors all right so here competitors right competitors so we are trying to compare ourselves the competitors I have a question so does Disney have a competitor uh, is is what a competitor Alex have this do Disney what? have a competitor or will he buy his competition oh okay um well I mean well yeah that's 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 one good question all right um and um, well you know sometimes uh, you don't just compare yourself to uh, other companies even if you don't have other companies to, uh, uh, well, not so many companies to compare, maybe you just, you know, compare uh, uh, with something else and, uh, you know, we're going to find out very soon. Uh, uh, but here, all right, um, when we are looking at this, we, 
you see here, this, this is our concept here. Whatever we are trying to compare, we need to have one very basic principle, and you guys need to remember that, all right? So we need to do it apple, all right? Not that apple, all right? Apple to apple. Yeah, you know what I mean. So apple to apple. So that's the basic concept when we are trying to compare different ratios. Because you cannot, you cannot really compare an apple to an orange. Because you cannot really compare the two. They are, they are two different things. You know what I mean. So what, what, whatever ratios that we are trying to compare, we need to find ourselves on the same level of ground. Okay? So that the comparison that we make will have some meaning in it. Okay? Otherwise, you know, there will be no meaning when you're trying to compare an apple to an orange. Because there's no way you can compare anything, you know, out of the two. Okay? All right? So here, if you are trying to compare companies to companies within the same industry, so you, you can tell they are in the same industry, so obviously you can find out some insight because they do have some uh, uh, common features. All right? Okay? So this is what we are trying to do. All right? Um, but what about the second one, guys? What are we trying to compare? So you see KFC versus something, all right? Something like assorted, uh, you know, like like all kinds of fast food. What do you guys think? So what what do you think we are comparing? Here, guys. Uh -huh. So you know, not only we can compare company to company. Uh, okay, is that the uh, Right. Yeah. There you go. Okay. That's very good. Yeah. I mean, you can just um, you know, refer it. Uh, refer. You know, your 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 refer to your work, and then you see something else. Okay. All right. So that is very good. Yeah. And and here, not only we can uh, use the first comparison, we can also compare uh, the company. All right. Versus uh, the industry. So we would like to see, uh, first of all, uh, within the industry, what is the average? You know, the average performance. Right, like like you are looking at your uh, you know subject uh, average, okay. So sometimes you would like to know uh, for the entire cohort what is the average, and then you would like to look at your average, and then you know if I'm above the average when it comes to the entire year level, okay. All right. So you know the first one uh, is more like you comparing yourself in the same subject with uh, your friend, okay. The second one is more like you comparing yourself to the average. The year level average, yeah, for business subject, I guess. Okay, all right. So I hope it makes sense to you. And um, what about the third one? If you look at a donkey, and then uh, there is a, like uh, more like a calendar. What what are we trying to compare? Yeah, can anyone uh, tell me the answer here? Yeah, you can just find your answer from your booklet actually. What do you think, guys? Come on. Okay, all right, yeah, Megan, right, exactly. So this is also what we can do. We can also compare our company along the timeline, all right? We can compare our company, all right, company versus uh, years. So maybe we would like to compare uh, our performance in 2021 and 2020, okay? So when we put the two sets of numbers together, then we are able to you know, come up with some uh, comparisons and insights okay but no matter what we do we always try to use the same principle here all right always remember uh, no matter what kind of uh, comparison that you make in the future uh, yeah for your EE or for your you know different analysis it has to be apple to apple otherwise you would distort the entire comparison okay the entire comparison will be twisted if you're not using this principle apple to apple okay all right so bear this in mind yeah okay all right so, you know, if we know what we are doing... Wait, question. Yes. I got a question. Alex, go ahead. Wait, what if that thing is like... You remember there's like few kinds of business, but some kind just go random directions? Oh, uh, okay. All right, yeah. Uh, do you still remember the term for that? Random. <laughs> no, it's not, not random. <laughs> no. It is a very long, you know, word, if you still remember. Uh, yeah, conglomerate. Yeah, thank you, uh, you know, Karina. Uh... Right. Um, if it is, if if that is the case, okay, uh, then you will compare their, you know, like like sub companies, like one by one, okay. Because you know the reason why they are a conglomerate 
is because they have so many different companies uh, from different industries. So when you're trying to make comparison, you you would just split, okay, the entire uh, corporate, uh, uh, you know, into different uh, industries, and then you would use different uh, the, of the uh, sub companies for comparison. Okay, so 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 you would make quite a lot of different comparisons if you are doing so. Okay, so that's how you make a more objective, uh, you know, analysis for that kind of um, a company. Okay, all right. Yeah, I hope it makes sense to you. Uh, but anyway, guys. So you know, now we kind of understand the reason why we are learning this chapter, because we would like to learn a lot more meanings based on the numbers that we are looking at. You know, it's it's, it's kind of pointless when you just look at the statement without making any analysis. And here. Of course, we're going to learn how to analyze the numbers. At the same time, how do we analyze it? This is how we analyze it, okay? There are so many different ways that we can analyze it, and there you go, okay? All right, yeah, so uh, good question there, uh, Alex, and, uh, you know, thank you for asking, yeah? And so now we're going we're gonna to look at, all right, uh, for your third page. So guys, before you uh, go to the third page, I'm just going to show you what you really have to learn uh, in this chapter. So if you are at the bottom of the page 2, then you are able to see a table like this. Right? You can see the table, right? Okay? So we are going to learn about two types of uh, analysis. Okay? So one that is mainly focusing on uh, liquidity. All right? Yeah, we kind of understand what liquidity is. All right? Um, and, uh, you know, it's basically the ability to repay uh, the short-term uh, short loan. Okay, so there are two ratios that we need to understand in order to see how well the liquidity uh, is for a company. Okay, and the second type of analysis that we have learned is you know very simple, profitability, like how well our company is really earning uh, in terms of uh, profit. So you guys already understood a little bit just by experiencing uh, the one question that I gave you just now. You know the one here on the left. This, this guy here? Yeah, so that is basically what we are trying to uh, analyze, uh, analyze, okay? All right, and and now I'm just going to show you some more solid um, techniques for how we can um, measure a company's liquidity, all right? So just two very simple ratios, and uh, don't worry, they're super straightforward, okay? As long as you know the crucial items for uh, the ratios, then you will be fine, okay? All right, so let's take a look off uh, page three, guys. So page three. So let's learn about uh, the first one. The first one we call that a you know current ratio. Uh, sometimes uh, people they would call that a current margin as well. Well, but not so many people nowadays they would call that margin. But uh, you know in case you see that from other uh, learning materials, then there you go. Okay, usually we just call that current ratio. Uh, when you are looking at the current uh, ratio, look at look at the equation here. All right, can someone explain it to me? What this equation really trying to work out? Yeah, can someone just you know tell me something? Okay, all right. So basically, current assets over current liabilities. Yeah, two one. I just want you know some people if if you are able to tell me some insights uh, just by looking at uh, the equation itself. What are we really looking at? Yeah, come on, just use your brilliant math brain with you. Since uh, yeah, every time when I go to your classroom, people that are working on math, I'm pretty sure you guys love math so much. So I'm just going to give you guys the opportunity uh, to uh, come up with uh, some ideas first. Come on, guys. You can just use your own interpretation. Yeah, it's okay. You don't have to be uh, like... Um, Super concise, or you know, like like super uh, uh, accurate about you know what, what 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 you know what should be seen here. Anyone would like to try it? Uh, Owen, oh, if you still have money left after paying short-term debts, uh, well, that is uh, pretty true. Yeah, that is pretty true. Okay, so um, in general, let me just ask you guys. If a company doesn't have uh, enough cash, I mean, not, well, I mean, not, not enough cash, not in, enough current assets to pay off the current liabilities. So, um, 
what do you think the number will be in general if a company doesn't have enough current assets to repay the current liabilities what kind of number are we looking at is it negative well Warren yeah right okay yeah, okay okay okay, okay. Right, smaller than one. Okay, so you see here from you know just use common sense and you can get some insights or ideas like you know what we are really looking at for current ratio. Okay, so if you cannot really uh, uh, repay your current liabilities using the available current assets, pretty sure the number will be less than one. Okay, all right, yeah, because you can imagine if you have ten current assets and then you have twenty. All right, current liabilities. So basically, you cannot re you, uh, use uh, the current assets right now to repay all your current liabilities. And if you put the two numbers in the equation, then for sure the number will be less than one. Okay, does it make sense here? All right. So you know it gives you some ideas. All right. So let's go to the very basic uh, question right here. Okay. All right. So guys, I just want you guys to help me identify the items very quickly. Um, so I'm just gonna ask people here. Um, all right. So Chloe, uh, when you look at um, the example question right here, all right, can you tell me which account would you put uh, cash into? Can you enlarge it a bit? Enlarge it a bit. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Large enough. Right. So here you have the question. Right, can you see it? Yeah, here, right here. Okay, yeah, here, this question here. All right. Yeah, it's also uh, in your booklet. Okay, so I just want you to identify um, for cash, the 1,000 cash right here. Which account would you put it into? Yeah, because you know, eventually we would like to calculate, uh, you know, the, the current ratio. So at least we need to know uh, what items should be put in uh, 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 which account. So for cash, where would you put it? Hello. Somewhere with a current liability of 1000 as well wait, wait 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 cash belongs to current liabilities i mean current liabilities come on is this something they have to repay uh some debts that you have to repay within a year do you, do you oh, no, that? i mean the cash is like current assets oh, okay okay yeah that's that's very good yeah this is what i'm what i, what I was trying to, to ask all right so you know there you go so you have uh like uh, this one here is a current asset so thank you chloe and um and and what about all right and uh here let me just ask um uh Haley, what do you think about uh like uh the bank uh where would you put it also current assets yeah current asset yeah for sure okay it can be converted into cash very quickly you just have to withdraw the money and that's that's how you can do it all right uh what about haruka haruka what do you think about the trade receivables um trade receivables yeah would you put it? Uh, where would you put it? I think it's um, liabilities. I forgot the term. Maybe. Oh yes. Uh, so okay, that's good. All right. At least you are willing to ask. So I just want someone to help Haruka. All right. Help me explain. What is a tray receivable? Can someone just put the answer in the chat? What is a tray receivable? Debtors. Okay. All right. What What does it mean, Marcus? Can you interpret it very quickly? Mm, I mean, you, you get money from them from, you know, because of what? Oh, the buyers who owe us will pay it later. All right, that's more like it. Yeah. So, you know, when we are having our business activity, uh, sometimes 
our buyers they don't pay cash all right they can pay later uh, and trade receivable basically is talking about those people they will pay us later so when they pay us then we will have cash and you know we assume they will pay us timely okay all right so that is why uh, we will also put trade receivables into current assets based on the definition okay all right so Haruka so next time please uh, remember that okay remember that okay uh, yes right but what about inventory inventory um, yeah Isabella what do you think inventory where would you put it would you put it in current asset or you know some other places or you know current liabilities or owners equity where would you put it oh Isabella are you, are you, are you here hello Oh yes. Uh, okay. Oh, that's Karina. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, for sure, right? Uh, Non-current assets. Are you sure, Isabella? Non-current assets. So you know, if you have, oh, okay, right? Because you know, think about the definition of current assets. It's some resource that you can convert it into cash very quickly, and you know, inventory is something that you are about to sell, okay, for cash very soon. And therefore, it will be current assets too. Okay, all right, yeah. So there you go, guys. Um, and um, if you already know, these four are the current assets. So we just have to add them up together so we can find a total number of this, all right? And then you can look for uh, the other number here, all right? So obviously, okay, uh, for the rest of it, this will be uh, your current liability. Okay. Oh, uh, but you know, before I, uh, you know, go to the uh, calculation, I just want to ask one more people. All right. Um. Well, Jasmine, Jasmine, can you quickly explain what trade payables are? Yeah, just use your own interpretation. Yeah, try to explain it nicely. How would you explain it? How would you explain trade payables? You owe other people from from what? Can you further explain it? Yeah, I mean, I know. I uh, yeah, I, I owe them, right? Yeah, so basically, that four thousand dollars is is me owing some people. But what did I do so I owe those people? Okay, buy goods from suppliers and you pay the money back. Yes, there you go. So you know, trade payables are the exact opposite of uh, trade receivables. Okay, you just have to remember that. And you can imagine, all right, if we are buying goods from our suppliers and we pay later, we'll pay it very soon. So we'll pay basically within 12 months. So that's why it is a current liabilities, okay? So if we already know uh, all the items here, all right, then we are able to construct uh, the answer for this, okay? So here, guys, can you quickly tell me uh, the current ratio for this case? What is the number okay Karina okay so that's two uh, but you know what Karina did you miss did you miss out something would you would you write yeah all right yes there you go Aaron yeah Haley this is something that you must remember when you are working uh, on a question like this you must use this format okay you cannot just write the answer as two even though you know the equation will give you two all right but the interpretation here we must use it you know in this format two to one okay two to one uh, one represents uh, Karina can you tell me what that means one represents okay liabilities yes okay for one dollar all right let's let's just say for one dollar of liability okay we have two dollars of current assets to cover it does it make sense guys if it makes sense, please, can you can you just jot it down in your notes? Okay, all right. So this is basically how we uh, interpret it, like uh, in words, all right? So, you know, with that being said, all right, so if you have um, a current ratio of a two to one, if you look at um, the part below, okay, we do have some general rules, all right? So here, guys, look at the general rules here. It would be quite nice 
to have a number of current ratio between 1.5 and 2. Okay? After your calculation, if you find a number which is between the two numbers here, which means is, is you are in a good position. All right, so this is something that you must remember. All right, that that, that there's no way uh, uh, to uh, you know uh, you know that well. I mean, you, you will see why uh, this is the case. But uh, for the range, you know, for different industries, for different uh, companies, uh, they have uh, a different standard. But generally, for our curriculum, we we are looking at uh, a range like here. Okay, all right. So when when you know, all right, it is two, is basically within the range. So for the answer here and therefore so how are we going to explain this okay we are going to say um you know because of this all right the business we are looking at the business is is in good condition repaying uh its short-term debts using current assets all right okay so this is how you are able to answer it all right because you know uh normally you'll be asked to uh write it after calculation all right so make sure you know how to uh write things here okay so every one dollar of current liability yeah every one dollar of cl you have two cas yeah two dollars worth of ca to cover it all right, and that's why you can see the business in is in a good condition, repaying uh, the short-term debts. All right, using the current assets. Yeah, you feel kind of secure, right? Okay, you know, um, because you have double, you have double of uh, the current assets to repay the current liabilities. So it's, it's kind of safe. So you don't need to worry about. All right, if I would uh, have trouble uh, repaying uh, the current debts. All right, yeah. Okay. All right. So that's basically uh, what we are looking at here. All right. Yeah. So there you go. Is there any questions so far? Okay. All right. So uh, I think I'm gonna give you a break. Okay. I'm gonna give you a five minute break. Yeah. All right. I know. Uh, it's been a lot going on, and I'm gonna give you five minute break, and then I'll come back to you. All right. Yeah. So go go to the toilet. Uh, go drink oh, some water. I asked a question in yeah. the chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for the rest of the people, you can uh, take a rest. All right. Yeah, Haley, go ahead. Oh. No, uh, I asked yeah, it in yeah, the chat. Yeah, I'm looking and at, you're uh, muted as well. Yep. Yeah, uh, let me take a look at it. Um, oh. Um. So for for this one here, we always use uh you know one as a base. All right, so you know, it's like every time it's like one liability, one current liability. All right, two, you know, what number of uh, current asset? Uh, I I don't know if this is what you are trying to um, um, ask here. All right, yeah, because you know, every time when you're using um, uh, the current asset as a, a numerator over a current liability as uh, a denominator, this is what you are looking for. All right, yeah, it's always you know, like per one you know unit of uh, current liability yeah w how many uh, current assets we are we're looking for okay all right so I, I hope it makes more sense to you right now okay all right Anyone? Yeah. Think about, you know, the items uh, within the equation, uh, and uh, if you can imagine the current ratio is being too high, what can be the reason why the ratio is too high, and uh, why it's going to be a bad thing sometimes? Oh, Arabella. 
yeah, that's very good. That is actually a very good answer. The company is not efficiently using its current assets. But um, can someone else address um, Arabella's uh, answer here? Like, in what way? In what way we are not using the current resource, um, you know, like efficiently? Yeah, the current assets, you know, efficiently. Is, is there something with economy of scale? Uh, yeah, no need to overthink, uh, Megan. Uh, a thing about the items in your current assets. If you have too much of some items, what could that mean? Yeah, so you know, if you go back to uh, the first simple example question there, then you can see some uh, uh, current asset items, right? So you know, if you have a really big number, it has to be some of those items, they have a huge amount, right? So you know, what can go wrong if you have uh, some very huge amount in those items? Yeah, guys, just, you know, keep thinking. Well, let me give you some more steps then. Um, what if they have uh, too much cash? What do you think? Because, you know, cash is part of uh, current assets, right? And if you're having a really big number, which means, you know, it could be you have too much cash, right? So that's one possibility. And, um, and, and you know, anyone would like to um, express uh, your idea? Isn't that a good thing? All right. Uh, well, I mean, some people, they would say, yeah, having more cash, isn't that great? Well, yes, for sure. But, you know, anyone would like to argue against uh, Warren's um, opinion? Because if you have the money already, you could have just invested it for a chance of more money. Too. Okay. All right. That's exactly what I'm trying to... Uh, 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 you know, like, like Pokemon cards. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alex, you don't you don't need to uh, go back to Pokemon cards like. Um, for, uh, yeah, from that uh, from that perspective. Well, but anyways, uh, that is one very good answer. And and Warren, uh, I I hope you also uh, get that uh, idea as well. All right, you know, just because you have a lot of money. All right, L let's say a lot of cash, but cash is just cash. You would only use cash, uh, to let's say. You know, uh, repay some uh, very uh, uh, current debts or some very short-term debts. All right, but what if you can use cash to earn more cash? You know, instead of just putting all the cash uh, within the piggy bank, would you use it for something that will give you extra benefits? And that is, um, you know, that is one issue we are really looking for. Okay. All right. Uh, well, but. Yes, Warren, I, I, I do agree with you. Yeah, you could play safe, uh, you know, just to get more cash. But, and that is the reason why there's a range for the current ratio. You see the reason why there's a range for current ratio? Okay, so this is the range where you would not get too risky, but at the same time, you can better utilize your current assets, like cash. All right, because at the end of the day, you want to make things more efficient. All right, you, you as an entrepreneur or as a businessman or a business person, shall we say? Okay, you are always trying to maximize your benefit, and that is one human nature. If you are studying economics, then you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, is the rationality uh, behind every single you know human being? All right, we want to earn as much as we can, and in business, we are trying to learn how we can earn as much as we can. We, we try to utilize all the resources as much as possible and, and that's the reason why all right we would not like to leave so much cash with us all right yeah maybe some but not too much so we can use those extra to earn something more all right i hope it uh, makes sense to you uh warren okay but uh, that's what we are trying to look at okay all right uh but also guys think about another item besides cash okay so cash here, yeah, so you know, too much cash ch cash could be a problem. Uh, cash. Yeah. Okay, so you know, I'm, I'm going to give it a very sad face. Yeah, but what about too much inventory? Anyone would like to tell me, yeah, what if we have too much inventory? 
to what, what, what does it mean? Yeah, because you know, inventory is also in your current assets, but if you have too much inventory, that will bum up uh, the ratio for sure. Okay, but that is not a good thing. Uh, how come? What, wait, what is inventory again? It's like what you have right now. What well, you I mean, stop. inventory is basically your stocks. You know, like if you're selling bananas, then you have a lot of bananas in your warehouse. So that's oh, yeah, of course that's a problem. If you don't sell enough bananas, just like Alex Tan said. Okay, no sales, no profit. Well, yes, exactly. All right. So, you know, you, you have too much idle resources uh, in your warehouse that... They have no, you know, like like no benefits to you, uh, in the very short period of time, all right? Because they are they are gonna be staying in the warehouse, okay? If you are you if you are buying too much inventory, they will be all staying in the warehouse. Like, why would you do that, okay? You know, instead of putting all the bananas in your warehouse, right? Why don't you just cut cut down, uh, a specific level of bananas so you can use the extra cash, do something better, right? Do something you know amazing. Okay, you know what I mean, all right. So at the end of the day, the two items here, the two issues here, will give you the same concern. Okay, if the current ratio is too high, all right. So we we would actually say, all right. So here, uh, too much idle resources, uh, or shall we say, current assets. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, such as uh, you know excessive cash or inventory, right? Not being, um, you know, uh, uh, invested properly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there you go. So there you go, guys. Right. Okay. I hope it makes sense to you. So you know, whenever we are making a business, it's it's not always just about looking at okay how much cash we have. Uh, or you know like uh, uh, how much profit that we are earning uh, as a number because you know there's so much more that we need to look at because you know you never know uh, if that is really the best strategy that you are looking for just because you have more cash it doesn't mean that uh, you're gonna earn way more all right it it, 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 it will tell you yes it's more safe uh, for your business in order to deal with uh, some uh, short-term debt but if you are making the business efficient or productive that's another question okay all right yeah so there you go um, so that's one thing and if you look at the, um, the second question here all right for some cases you may not be able to use the general rule okay all right so you know here uh, well this one here is quite tricky uh, it's not really required by the curriculum but I just want you to think about it okay so I'm just gonna show you the idea and, and see if you understand it okay uh, for something like fast food shops or, or you know like grocery shops uh, they usually have a normal ratio uh, of less than one okay can you guess why like why you know for those shops they have uh, a smaller ratio in general yeah this one can be tricky so I'm not expecting anyone uh, who could answer that but you know you can you can think about it right yeah, and that's why it, you know here we call that general rule, all right? It only applies to like general industries. For some industries, yeah, even when you are getting a number less than one, uh, it is it, it, all normal. Any ideas, guys? Okay, yeah. Um, well, yeah, Alex, that, that's, uh, that's a good try, even though uh, we are not really uh, focusing on that. It's, uh, it's about how much they can turn over there, that the sales on a daily basis. Um, so, you know, you, you might want to think about, all right, every single day, okay, how much, like how many goods does a grocery shop, okay, sell to the customer? Right. Yeah. I mean, you, you can you can imagine for fast food, or also uh, you know like grocery shops, they have a really fast turnover rate. 
Oh, they maintain relatively a small inventory level and have a quick cash turnover. Yes, Warren. Yeah, so this is exactly what, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking for. That's very good. Yeah, I mean, that's one very good answer, Warren. Yeah, okay. Because, you know, in some industries, you can turn over, uh, like, inventory very quickly. Because every day when you look at uh, the fast food shops, a lot of people, they go there. Right? Let's go to KFC. And then, you know, the fried chicken, the deep fried chicken, all right? Yeah, they can be sold out very quickly, every single day. Because so many people, they just eat fast food every single day. Okay? All right? And if you also think about uh, the current liabilities, sometimes KFC, they would buy chickens, uh, you know, with credit purchase. So they don't pay. They don't pay immediately. All right? But the point here is, they clear their inventory way faster than, uh, you know, when they uh, clear uh, their uh, credit purchase. So, you know, uh, the current liability could be still there when they have already sold all their inventory. All right. So for those companies, you can tell the current assets, the level could be way lower than the current liabilities. Not because they are not able to repay the current liabilities. It's because, you know, the turnover rate is like too high. Okay, so we would we would generally say okay if that is the case, uh, we would say, all right, we would just say, uh, inventory uh, was um, uh, quickly, uh, you know, quickly uh, turn it turn into uh, sales uh, when uh, trade payables are still in uh, the account. All right, okay. So you know this part here, yeah, it's not really required by the curriculum, but all right, just you know, uh, it's not always the case. So that is why you know it's just a general rule, all right. For some industries, when you have a huge turnover rate, okay, for your inventory, uh, at the end of the day, you may have a number less than one, but it's all normal because of um, you know like how quick they turn their inventory into sales, okay, all right. Yeah, and, uh, and, 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 and they still have uh, a lot of trade uh, payables remain unpaid. Yeah, because you know, they, they just sell their goods too quickly. Uh, and then later on, they will repay their trade payables. So if you think about it mathematically, uh, then you, will ha you always have a number less than one. Okay, all right. Yeah, so there you go. Um, but you know, I just want people to answer the last question here. So if the ratio is too low, the company may have difficulty in... Um, how would you fill in the blank? Can someone help me fill in the blank here? Yeah, very quickly. Come on, guys. You can do it. Difficulty in... Yeah, someone... Yeah, help me, please. Oh, yeah, Warren. Yeah, thank you. Repay... Uh, well, I, I, I'll, I'll make it more specific. Can, can someone help me, uh, you know, refine Warren's uh, answer in the chat? Repay... Uh, yeah, it you can make it more specific. Come on, guys, you can do it. Okay, meeting uh, is short-term obligation. Yeah, that's that's very nice. All together, yeah. So you know, guys, just like that, right? Yeah. So you know, I'm just gonna type it here. Repaying um, a short-term debt. All right. Well, yeah. Just do a little more. You can. You guys can do it. With um with this um current uh, well here I'm just gonna use the uh, abbreviation with this uh, current assets. Okay, all right. But I want you to take a look of uh, the last sentence here. All right, even it may have valuable fixed ex assets. Can, can 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 someone here explain it to me? All right, in some company they do have some very valuable uh, fixed assets, but. How come they're going to be pointless here? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought, you know, you, if you had some uh, valuable fixed assets, then that, that would fix the problem. But how come this is not the case? What do you think, guys? So maybe I can just sell the fixed assets. You know, like, um, like, like, um, like, like a factory, you know, like a building, right? And then I'll get the cash, right? But you know why? Why you know, we would come up with um, such an idea, or even it may have like valuable fixed assets. They that may not help improve uh, the situation. You know, like a factory.
Okay, because they cannot sell it. Yeah, uh, I'll refine that answer a little bit, Chloe. But that is one very good point. All right. Uh, think about it. You can sell your inventory very quickly. Yeah, it's just like a buy and sell situation. All right, people they go to your shop, they buy your stuff, then you get the cash. Okay, but when it comes to factory, how would you sell the factory? Do the people they just you know come to you? Okay, I'm just gonna buy it. Yeah, here, there you go. You have your one hundred million dollars. No, no. The real way to sell a company, you won't actually do it on yourself. Is、uh, a guy points a weapon at you and say, "If you don't give me your company, I'm going to kill you." Then of course you have to hand it over with some very illegal papers. Okay. Ah,、uh, thank you, Alex. <laughs> for, <laughs> thank you, Alex, for the answer. Um,、uh, that's very creative.、Uh, as always. Uh, but but yeah, it's it's somewhat similar to what Alex、uh, said. There is a very complicated procedure, shall we say? Okay, if you think about you know selling a factory, it's it's not like that. All right, you're just gonna go to、uh, someone's、uh, house and then all right, I'm gonna buy your factory. Here is your one hundred million dollars. No, all right, there will be a bunch of uh, negotiations, uh, bargaining, and then some administration work, right? And、um, you know some contract going on. It takes time, okay. But you are talking about dealing with some short-term liabilities, and I don't think you are able to wait, all right, for that long, okay. So even when you have some very good non-current assets, so here we are basically referring to non-current assets because you know sometimes we we would call non-current asset as、uh, fixed assets, okay, all right. So you know when you're looking at that, they may not help you. To deal with、uh, short-term debts, okay, all right. So,、um, so there you go.、Uh, yeah, and Chloe, yeah, too expensive. Not everyone can afford, right? You know, it takes some time to find a good buyer, all right, because you know they know there is a bigger risk when they are trying to get something expensive. It's gonna take some time to consider. It's gonna take some time,、uh, you know,、uh, to investigate. Okay, whether it's worth it, right? So you know, that's my point. Okay. All right. Yeah. So there you go, guys.、Um, so that's basically、um, current ratio. Okay. So、um, are we all good? Is there any questions before we move on? Okay. All right. So that's nice.、Uh, so let us just move on to the next part. All right.、Uh, since we still have like thirteen、uh, minutes.、Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, guys. I know.、Uh, you know, for this financial、uh, unit, it's going to be all. All right,、uh, terminologies, definitions, and then a calculation. So, spare with me. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next ratio. Okay, where we're gonna look at、um, the topic of liquidity as well. But this one here is very similar to、um, what you have just learned from、um, you know the current ratio. Okay. So take a look at this. All right.、Um, so here is another ratio that we can use. To measure companies' liquidity,、uh, we have so many terms again. Okay, yeah. Don't ask me why they have to come up with so many alternative uh, terms. Uh, I can tell you one reason. It's because people they would like to make it more professional.、Uh, that is always the case. All right. Not because it's necessary to have so many names. It's because people they would like to make it difficult for people, and that's how they call themselves professional. This is always the case.、Uh, you know. Accounting is not the first batch of、uh, you know like、um, like an industry、uh, calling themselves professionals, but you know in in the future there will be some other industries they will become professional as well. But if you would like to become professional, then you need to come up with something that is difficult or you know technical, so people they would buy your idea. All right, that is really professional, and、uh, we should pay those people more. And accounting is just one of them. Um, you know, yeah. So I hope that makes sense to you.、Uh, but you know, when you're looking at the second ratio here,、uh, usually we would call that quick ratio. Okay. Or sometimes you would you would see like asset task ratio. Okay. All right.、Uh, when you look at the equation, there's only one bit、uh, that is different from、uh, the current、uh, current ratio, which is here. Well, let me just you know wipe this out first. All right. Which is here. Yeah. They would first subtract the inventory from、uh, the current assets, and then they would do your current ratio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, without reading uh, the booklet, 
Can someone tell me why, for this ratio, you have to subtract the infantry first? What are we trying to, you know, achieve here? I mean, isn't current ratio enough to find the liquidity? How come we need to find another like quick ratio by uh, subtracting uh, the inventory first uh, from the current asset? So you know we 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 then find the ratio again. Is there a particular reason that uh, you guys can think of? Like why? Why we have to exclude uh, inventory from a current asset? Any any attempt? Not really. Well, I mean, well, let's do it step by step then. Okay, all right. So, if you have to understand this, so first of all, you need to finish uh, the table here. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you still remember the level of liquidity uh, from uh, your current asset items because you know these are all current assets. All right. And I just want you to rank, okay? Just help me rank uh, the four items here. All right, so which one do you think is the most liquid asset? Uh, I'm just gonna ask people uh, very quickly. Um, what about, um, well, well, let me go from uh, uh, the bottom here. Uh, Suzette, can you give me one, uh, you know, uh, well, just the most liquid asset? Okay, cash. Uh, can you explain it very quickly? Why cash is most liquid asset? How come? Yeah, if, 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 if you know, if, if you really have to interpret, oh, it can be immediately used and it doesn't have to be uh, converted. Exactly. All right. So here, for the most liquid asset, we would definitely call uh, you know cash. All right, right here. All right. Uh, Royce, are you here? Yeah, Royce, can you give me the second one? The second most liquid current asset. Which one would you cash a bank? Can you, can you explain it? I mean, you're right, but I just want some explanation. Cash at bank. How can you explain it? Okay, it's just like cash, but you just need to take it from a bank. Yeah, you can see how easy it is, right? Because at the end of the day, when we're talking about current asset, it's just, you know, those assets you can convert into cash easily. All right, yeah. Uh, but what about, um, well, let me just skip one person here because you know, Owen answered quite a lot of questions today. Uh, Natalie, can you give me the third one? Natalie, are you, are you here? Can you give me the third most liquid current assets based on the four items here what do you think oh, Natalie are you there Tray receivables. Okay, uh, but can you explain it very quickly, Natalie? Explain the steps, uh, you know, like um, how we can turn this uh, into cash eventually. Yeah, so here I'm just trying to get you guys uh, to remember like what the items really are because you know there are so many items uh, in these chapters and um, yeah I just want you to uh, you know quickly explain it so so what kind of process we have to go through in order to see okay all right uh, wait, 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 Natalie um, can you make it more specific selling them I thought you have sold them the goods so they become your trade receivable No, 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 
not 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 factoring, not not factoring. All right, no no no, Natalie. Um, so remember, tray receivables is something is, is the goods that you have sold to uh, you know, the buyers, but they don't pay you yet. All right, they will pay you later because you have granted them a credit period. All right. So when it comes to uh, the deadline, then they will give you the cash, and then you will have the cash. Okay, all right. So it may take you thirty days, forty days, twenty days. All right, not long. Okay, all right. But compared to cash at bank, obviously it takes a longer time to convert it into cash. All right, does it make sense to you? And therefore, we're gonna put it here in the third place. All right, yeah. So here, yeah, trade receivables. Okay, for the last one, uh, I think we all know, right? Because there's only one left. Inventory, yeah. For inventory, you can imagine if you haven't even sold the inventories uh, to the people, then how long it's gonna take until it will become cash, right? So you can see um, the different stages here. So, so first, you need to you, you need to sell your inventory to people like the debtors right like the trade receivables and then when the trade receivables are to pay you then they may pay you by sending the money to the bank all right so if you want the cash then you need to withdraw the cash from the bank all right so eventually you will get the cash okay so you can rank the level of liquidity using different current asset items all right and this equation here is basically telling you Oh, uh, Owen, uh, but doesn't inventory also depend on how much inventory you are trying to convert and how quick uh, your business can sell inventory? Owen, exactly. All right, exactly. And this is the reason why we need a quick ratio analysis. If you just look at your current ratio, because we consider all the current assets together, because we generally call those current assets, they are easy to to be converted uh, into cash but if we think about it more carefully all right just th just think about it more carefully think about the inventory okay God knows how long it's gonna take the inventory to be sold uh, to different businesses okay if you are not able to sell your inventory then your number here will be distorted because the number here you are trying to look at, you are trying to look at how easy a firm, all right, uh, they're, they're trying to use your current asset to repay their current liabilities. But what if some current assets, they would never be able to, you know, convert it into cash? That will create problems, okay? So if you would like to see it from a more objective point of view, then you must exclude inventory in order to see, in order to see a clear picture does it make sense to you okay all right oh uh, and um, oh Haley uh, but then for inventory you can start selling immediately while you have to wait for uh, your debtors to pay you for trade receivables okay uh, Haley your question it only applies to cash sales if you only allow cash sales then it will be just like what you what you said, okay? Uh, but normally, it's not always going to be that case, all right? Even for our cafe on the hill, uh, a lot of items that we uh, used to sell, they are all you know. Well, I mean, you know, when when we are buying them, okay, uh, you just have to use another perspective. When we are buying those uh, items, we always buy them, you know, uh, on credit, okay? All right. Uh, so you know, in general, that's why we would say inventory. It can be difficult, uh, you know, when, when, when we try to treat it as a very liquid asset. Uh, and if we would like to become more objective uh, about the ratio, then we will have to exclude inventory in order to uh, get a better picture or in order to get a more conservative uh, figure for our business so we can come up with plans. Okay, maybe if we're using quick ratio, we see the number is actually not that good comparing to uh, the current ratio that we used uh, and here if we become more conservative then we can come up with different uh, better strategies uh, in order to uh, find ourselves in a more secure position okay all right 
So I hope uh, it makes sense to you here. All right, and therefore we have to exclude inventory from the current assets. Okay. All right. Um, yes. Thank you very much. Um, so I think I'm going to stop it here. Okay. So you know, uh, in the next lesson we'll start, uh, you know, calculating uh, uh, the quick ratio here. And uh, well, it's basically the same after you have excluded uh, the inventory item. Okay. Uh, and then we, we are able to get uh, some insights from uh, the quick ratio a more conservative uh, uh, you know insights from the quick ratio um, and after that you will see from your booklet you will have quite uh, some uh, MC questions then we will uh, you know work out all the questions in the lesson all right so that's basically what we're gonna do in the next lesson um, so before we go is there any questions that um, I can answer yeah before I, I let you go well, you can ask me after class. You can ask me, you know, on email. Uh, but you know, if you see questions, please, okay, yeah, don't, don't be hesitating, okay. Just ask questions, okay. All right. Yeah, it seems like you guys uh, have no questions so far. Uh, but before we go, one more thing. All right. Try to digest what you have learned from the two financial statements first, okay. Otherwise, uh, you know, it will be difficult. To come up with uh, all the ideas here when we are using them for the analysis okay so do your digestion and then i'll see you in the next lesson all right okay um all right i think that's it for now uh i'll see you guys in the next lesson bye 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 all right all right bye 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 bye